I saw it then. And then later on, as I was working at Rich's department store in Atlanta between gigs, when there was a, the sit-in, the college college kids came over to Rich's to protest with the sit-ins. And the word came down from the top office at Rich's that anybody that served those students, consider your ass fired. And at the time, uh, Edward Patton and I, my cousin, the other pip, Edward was working on the bridge where the, where the college kids came in on those stools, and mm-hmm. they were sitting on the stool, and Edward called me upstairs and told me, come on down, Bubba, they're here. I went downstairs, and we served those kids. We served them so that we could have a, a part in participating to our growth as black people. Now, on the outside of Richard, the Klan was marching down the street with hoods on. So I've lived through this, and it's just sickening to know that in 2020, we're still going through this same, same thing. And I'm so upset, and I'll bring you to this. We got to have people like the Rev to keep putting it out there like the way it is. And we got to keep talking about it. But as far as I heard you mention about these corporations sending money and putting money into into the communities and to these organizations, we don't see that. We don't know who's getting that money. What we need to see is some action and some verdicts being given down to these people who are taking, I mean, who are just actually lynching us and shooting us for no reason whatsoever, except for we're African-American black people. And I think, I want to touch on this just a little bit. I think white is scared. (laughs) You know, they just scared, man, because they know that they are in the minority. And let me tell you, if we could all, and I say if, this is a big if, but we could join together some kind of way with the minority groups, we take their power, and that's what they're fighting. That's just all I got to say about it. And it's scary, man, because they kill. We march, we hope, we speak, we keep the faith. We do all of these things. We feel that we're going to overcome them, and I still feel that we will. But right now, they kill, man. So I'm uh, y'all y'all going to something else because I'm getting more and more upset about thinking about Michael. Michael, I mean, uh, the Brooks brother down there in Atlanta in my hometown. Sure, mm-hmm. Mr. Brooks. Oh sure. man, what? I I don't know. I don't know how how is this gonna end. Oh man, I don't get it. I don't get it, Chief. Yes, sir. You you being on 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 the other side, so you got you got you got two sides of this in your, in your sure. former life. Yes, sir. You know, at, at one point, I had you know as I said, I was talking about trying to play devil's advocate and trying to, as I always do, uh, sometime at my own detriment, I I try to see things from the other side. Right. Now, the George Floyd thing, I couldn't see from the other side, period. There was, sure. there was no other side for me to see. I tried to see before I actually saw the video. Right. I was trying right. to say, okay, well, this dude just panicked. And I started to think about, I started to think about what I go through as a black man. You know, things okay. that you go, as I talk about, you know, in the past, fish don't know that they wet. Right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, when we grow up, you grow, racism is so baked in to right. this culture. You don't even know that you are dealing with you, you. You make so many adjustments and decisions that you have to make day after day, sure. second after second. Sometimes you know right. you got to decide: Am I going to be pissed off that they're following me around the store, right? Or, or am I going to be pissed off that? They don't want to put the change right in my hand. They don't want to touch my hand. You know, all of these kind of things. You think all of these calculations that we do. So I, so I think of that just in regular things. And it's not even a life and death situation. 
It's just regular everyday living. Sure. So I try to think about the officers, how every day, every officer is potentially is always looking and everything could potentially become a life or death situation. Nothing happens. Rarely do you have the wild person coming through with a knife and you know exactly what their intent is. There's usually some buildup or some way that you decide to handle a situation, whether you Mm -hmm. de-escalated or escalated based on how you move. And, but in this case, I was like, "Mm -mm." I mean, I, I saw the video and I was like, no, maybe he was scared for his life. I said, well, no, you can't be scared for your life when somebody's when you're chasing somebody who's running away from you. Um, then it becomes about something else. So I'm, I'm trying to, to, to get, is this a mindset thing? Is, is, it, is it as simple as, cause, so for me, knowing that I'm like, you know what? I probably would have made some mistakes. If I was a cop, I probably would have made some mistakes by now. I probably would have messed up and panicked shot somebody when I shouldn't have or something like that. But guess what? That's why I'm not trying to be a police officer. Right. right. <laughs> Cause I know I don't have right. the, the, that ability that I'm so scared of, of hurting someone who doesn't need to be hurt that I'm not going to go that way. Sure. But then it seems like there's some folks that is almost like, Oh, I get a license to hurt folk that I don't like. I mean, that's what you, that's what it feels like. I mean, you don't sure. want to think like that. You want to think it's protect and serve. That's right. But then it's, but then it's not. So let me just shut up and let you let you go, Chief, because you got you've trained some of these folks. You've seen some of these folks come right, in. You, wanna, right. you know whether their their mind is right. Right. Well, you, you know, it, it's interesting. And, and you know, just hearing the 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 depth of of frustration in in Ryan's voice and, of course, in, in Bubba's voice, you know, that's one of the things that and, and I'm going to get back to your question. But I think when when people are trying to assess why is the African American community and other communities so upset? Um, I don't think they quite understand the historical hurt that um, people are feeling. And, you, you know, you could hear it in Ryan's voice, you could hear it in Bubba's voice. And when you see these things as a youngster or as an adult uh, of being treated, uh, mistreated in front of your family or by yourself, those are things that don't go away. And it's often easy for people to say, well, you know, why don't you guys move on? Why can't the black community move on? Because those are things that, that really get down to the core of your soul. You know, it's, it's one thing to, to be tired of hearing it, but it's another thing to have been there to watch your father being called a nigger. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to have heard your, your father tell you stories about with tears in his eyes, about coming home from serving his country and couldn't even buy a hamburger. Uh, It's one thing to uh, have your family in the car and be called a nigger. It's one thing to be a police commander, as I was, and be followed around a store because you have a hoodie on, just to turn around and tell the security guard when you hit him with your badge, son, this is the way you surveil people. You know, uh, all those things stick in your mind as you think about these incidents. And as you look at these incidents with with disgust and and you go back historically, whether it's in your mental resume or whether you are looking at things that have happened historically uh, to the community, you know, over the years. Now, as as a as a police official, I can tell you that a lot of training goes into making sure that officers have all of the prerequisite skills to perform the job professionally. Chiefs all over the country spend thousands of dollars per officer every year to make sure that Officer Phillips or Officer Adams can do the job as they have sworn to do under oath. Mm -hmm. Now, in this particular case, um, well, let me, before I get into the case, but let me also say, you know, there are there were thousands of officers and a lot that I work with and train that did outstanding work every day. However, as we all know that, you know, even in your even your personal relationships, you can do a lot of good things. And then that one time you forget to take out the trash, forget to take tube off toothpaste. You've gone from hero to zero. You know what I mean? So. Um, 
but when when you look at this particular thing, you're looking at this incident as you asked them bad. Uh, let, let's let's break this thing down very quickly. You had a, a a a call of a guy asleep at the wheel. Officer, one officer comes up for almost twenty minutes. It appeared that there was a cordial situation going on, at least from the video. Um, and then another officer pulls up, and all of a sudden, we're into an arrest situation. Now we're fighting for a taser. The guy grabs a taser and runs away. Now, here here's where here's where it gets complicated. So obviously the officer the 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 gentleman got the best of both officers and got the taser away, as mm-hmm. we know. He runs away, and then he turns around and shoots the the taser at at the officer. Now, the taser absolutely, if you get hit with one of those probes, will send a joke through your body that will help you release all of your liquids. You know, mm-hmm. it it is a ride. Okay. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it will. There's no doubt about that. However, you know, the taser is a non-lethal weapon. Now, when you put all this together, that gentleman was running away. He wanted to get away. Right. If he wanted to really over subdue those officers, he could have done it right when he was taking the taser from him. He that's absolutely right. could have done that. But mm-hmm. he snatched that thing because that's the thing that was inflicting pain on him. And he wanted to get the hell out of there. You know, Mm -hmm. at least that's what running indicates to most reasonable people. So Mm -hmm. he's running away and then he turns and fires the taser. Now, according to the news media reports that we saw today when they announced charges, um, Mm -hmm. uh, the officer thought that he saw a muzzle flash. You know, now that taser is yellow and we've all been trained on it. You know the difference between the taser and a firearm. And Mm -hmm. here's the other thing. They patted him down before he ran. Right. So, again, um, you know, you really got to look at a lot of things because the frustration of the community is that you have several incidents of very mundane things. You know, Michael Garner, he was he had a single cigarette and got choked out. Um, You look at Mr. Floyd, an allegation of a fake twenty dollar bill. Now, let me ask you this, and, and, and you know, I just want to keep it real from both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you know the dollar bill that you got from Safeway today when you went to buy your bread that the, that the change that you received, you didn't get a fake $5 bill? Right. right. Can, you, can you say definitively right now that every dollar in your wallet is, is a real, genuine article? I can't tell. You know what I mean? And that's why in most agencies – not all, but most agencies, when you get a complaint like that, they instruct the officers, take the report, but tell the, the victim to take all their, their documentation to their check and fraud unit or their detective bureau, and they will follow up. Because, again, most people, you know, don't know whether they've got a, a fake 20 or not. Okay? Right. And, oh, now we're, right. Right. and so now we move into the DUI. And now you have a DUI that normally – and. And of course, none of us should be drinking and driving because we know the dangers of that. We shouldn't even engage in that. However, the reality is in most court systems, if that was your first one, you would be put in some type of of drinking counseling situation. Uh, You probably get a few points on your license, a fine, and you would move on. Mm -hmm. And even if it was your second, you may do a few days in jail, get your, your, your training and so forth and move on. But no one should end up dead over these types of situations. Now, it's unfortunate. Uh, it raises a lot of issues. I mean, when you and we and we even can't even say that it's a black, a white on black thing, because if you look at the officers that were fired in Atlanta, that tased that young man and that young lady from Spelman and Morehouse, mm-hmm. there were three black officers that were caught up into that and fired. Okay. If you go back to the gun trace task force in the Baltimore city police department, you have black officers planning guns and drugs on black suspects. So what I, what I will say to you is that there is a cultural situation in some situations that says that you do whatever you have to do in certain communities Mm -hmm. to make these things happen. And so I agree with you, Ryan, that there needs to be, some some changes 
There needs to be some upgrading, some enhancements. Um, you know.